What is a disturbing fact you wish you could unlearn? Story 1. I work on a remote mine site in the northwest of Australia. It's so remote we fly two hours from the capital city to an airstrip owned and operated by the company. Anyways, during a quarterly review meeting, the mine's general manager says to about 40 of us, During the lifetime of the mine, 30 years or so, statistically speaking, we will have one plane crash. I wish I could unlearn that one. Edit. If you believe air crash investigators, over 50% of plane crashes occur during takeoff and landing. Story 2. There is a microorganism, globally spread but especially in warm fresh water in the American Southeast, which swims up your nose and attacks your brain and spinal fluid. You present, at first, with cold symptoms. From that point, you will have about a week to correctly diagnose it, which requires a spinal tap, before you paralyze and die. Oh, and there's no FDA-approved treatment. Mortality is approximately 95%. Story 3. My daughter's college education is estimated to cost $300,000 each. Edit. I have 529 plans, and this is what my brokerage website tells me. They suggest I increase my contribution by over 1000 per month to make up for my estimated shortfall. I don't necessarily believe the number is accurate, and I am aware of other options. Story 4. CSF. Rhinoria. If your head gets injured in just the right way, your brain fluids start dripping out of your nose, and you die in a few days of dry brain. Even if you go to the doctor, they might think it's just an excessively runny nose and give you allergy medication. Apparently, the way to identify CSF is that if it forms a rosy ring when dabbed with a tissue. Story 5. The Ogallala Aquifer is a shallow water table aquifer located beneath the Great Plains in the United States. We have already depleted it. Once depleted, the aquifer will take over 6,000 years to replenish naturally through rainfall. The aquifer system supplies drinking water to 82% of the 2.3 million people 1990 census, who live within the boundaries of the High Plains study area. Story 6. My best friend's mother told me this story about how some little girl was so excited to meet this very old golden retriever. She took it on a very long walk, exhausting the dog to the point that when it got back, it laid down on its bed and died. I have never wanted to slap a woman so hard before. I could have lived a completely happy life never knowing this thing, and it will haunt me forever. I don't know what's worse, the trauma it must have caused the kid, or the trauma it's causing me owing to my love for dogs. Story 7. That the Nazis did experiments on twins, where one twin would be put in near boiling water, and then removed and observed to see how that twin recovered, or didn't, and compare him slash her to the other twin, or perform vivisection on human beings while alive and without anesthesia or anything. That shit haunts me and I wish I never had to hear that one set of human beings could do that type of thing to another set of human beings. Story 8. Heard this ultra-terrifying day wrecker from a philosophy guy who works in brain surgery. It simply deals with understanding facts we already know, but that humans have generally not understood the implications of. And this is it. That thoughts arise from electrical activity in the brain. Think about it. Once your physical brain is dead, there is simply nothing left to create thoughts. Mind arises from highly complex electrical and chemical processes, and science has never identified even hints of a realm beyond ours, or signs that the brain receives information from any outside sources. The idea of a soul and afterlife was debatable until modern neuroscience. While we don't understand a lot about the mind, though read famous scientist Daniel Dennett for a reconsidering of how much we do know about consciousness and books full of matrix-level mind fucks. We certainly have to go beyond the pale to imagine how or why our existence in anything like this form could exist after the brain does not exist. Happy to debate these points with anyone who is somewhat sane. But if you have to bring religion into it, please at least consider conceding my point that it is sort of nuts to believe that we have thoughts of any kind after death. No one seems to believe we sneeze after death, and that too is a biologically based process. Story 9. There's a type of crayfish that farms sea stars. By cutting all their water legs off and eating its arms all the way to the center, but leaving the center intact. It then feeds the sea star with kelp to keep it alive so it regenerates, and then repeats this process. Story 10. 
When the Challenger exploded in 1986, the astronauts didn't die from the explosion, nor did they die from depressurization as NASA has initially claimed. There was some evidence they turned on their personal oxygen supply. They died from the impact when they hit the surface of the Atlantic Ocean. They were in free fall for two and a half minutes. Not only that, but NASA was fully aware of the dangers of the launch. Engineers at NASA warned officials time and time again that the fuel or ring would fail if they launched at such low temperature. It was pretty frigid the day of the launch, and they ignored them just because they didn't want to have to push back the launch date. Story 11. In most cases, when a parasite gets into the brain, they don't remove it. They just kill it with some sort of acid or something with a similar effect, then just let the body calcify it. It's weird because you'd think that the parasite could still do something. My mother has a cousin, honestly not sure, but a family member, who got a parasite from eating bad meat on a trip to Mexico. They couldn't remove it, as it burrowed into her brain, so it's still there till this day and she's dying. It's really sad. Last I heard, her mental health was declining rapidly. Story 12 my biology teacher had a Q&A session before Christmas, and one student asked if it's possible to be allergic to your own blood. Unfortunately, you can. Just imagine your own immune system destroying your red blood cells, constant hemorrhaging, constantly feeling cold and out of breath. When we got back from winter break, we saw a new face in class, a former student of my bio teacher who just so happened to have this disease, and we spent the whole class asking questions. I feel so bad for the guy, but thankfully the medicine available to suppress the immune system has made his life bearable. My college roommate had a similar condition. You can look up called DVT or Bessett's disease. There is medicine to suppress his white blood cells, but yeah, it's still incurable and he's going to have to take them for life. Cool part, when this dude catches a cold or something, because he's always suppressing his immune system, he has to stop taking his medicines and his ultra WBCs fix him back up. Story 13. Jeffrey Dahmer drilled a hole into some victim's skulls and tried pouring different toxic liquids into the hole. He was trying to make a slave that could eat and drink but could in no way fight back or escape. The worst fact is that victims might survive the first hole with all brain functionality intact and live long enough to be fully aware that they were going to get a second or third hole drilled. Story 14. A man named Hisashi Aoshi in 1999 suffered immense radiation poisoning after a nuclear accident. In fact, he is known to have taken more radiation poisoning than anyone else in history. Because of this radiation, it messed up his chromosomes as well as his cells and mind system. He was kept alive for 83 days by scientists and doctors. During that time, by day 20, almost all the skin on his body had fallen off, leaving his entire body in constant pain. Later, the skin around his eyes as well as his eyelids also came off, so his eyes were always open even when asleep. His eyes would also sometimes leak blood, making it look like he was crying. His intestines were so messed up that he started to have constant diarrhea, which soon started to have large amounts of blood because his intestines were starting to decay from the inside. On day 53, his heart stopped three times, but scientists and doctors were able to restart it. He was basically only being kept alive by machines at this point, and the doctors started questioning if it would be more humane to let him die, as he was in very obvious, unimaginable, indescribable levels of pain and suffering. Some doctors even said that it was torture forcing him to live like this. Due to the radiation, almost all the muscles in his body had been destroyed. The only one that wasn't was his heart, which was still being kept alive from various machines. The worst part of all of this, that Ouchie was completely conscious throughout all of it, and while he couldn't talk due to tubes being in his throat to help him breathe as the radiation also destroyed his lungs, he was in obvious pain every time someone touched him, or even while he was just laying on his bed. And while around the two-month mark, it's unknown if he even felt pain, as he stopped reacting to being touched, as well as stopped thriving in agony 24-7. His pupils still shrank when light was shown into them, suggesting brain activity. Hopefully he did stop feeling pain by then, if not, then that makes it even worse. His body around day 80 was quite obviously to anyone at this point unsalvageable, and mold was starting to develop on his skinless body. He was even described as a corpse with a beating heart, so they decided that trying to save him wasn't worth it, and pulled the plug. When they did, they studied his body and found out that his organs had all started to decay when he was still alive. All of this and more happened to one man who should have been 
killed out of mercy for his sake. Hisashi Aoshi has probably had the most painful, torturous, slowly agonizing death of all time. Story 15. Don't Retire in Vegas. In some states in the USA, particularly Nevada, your doctor can basically sell you to a company. If you're a senior with an untrustworthy doctor, they can throw memory loss, hysteria, confusion, etc. onto a piece of paper and hand it over to a company. This company can claim guardianship over you without ever meeting you or hearing of them. And they can take you out of your house, sell your house and all of your belongings, put you in a nursing home and have full control over your finances. They can force you to take medication every day for the rest of your life that makes you confused and unable to think clearly until you die. They can bar your family from visiting you as well, and it's all 100% legal. Before you even find out it's happened to you, there's already been a court hearing where the judge is persuaded to signing your life into some stranger's hand based on your doctor's false claims. Story 16. Surgeons used to operate on infants without anesthesia, including open-heart surgery. They have stopped this, however, in the 1980s. I had ear surgery to put tubes into my ears as a young child. My parental guardian opted to not use anesthesia as she worried I would become addicted to drugs later in life. The single most painful moment of my life. It felt like sub-zero ice picks were digging into my ear. It was so painful I had an out-of-body experience. Still did drugs later on too, so that didn't really work out at all. Story 17 There's such things as 4th, 5th, and 6th degree burns. 4th degree means all the layers of skin at the burn site are gone. 5th degree means muscle under the skin is damaged. 6th degree is literally down to the bone. Yeah, I was a lot happier thinking 3rd degree was the worst. Story 18. A queen of Scotland, if my memory is good, was sentenced to death by beheading. Bear in mind that a beheading was always seen as a quick death. One chop and that's done. She got up to the chopping block and made her prayers. The executioner took three swings to properly behead her. I recall reading how she screamed in terror and pain after the second hit cut her voice. I forgot the details of much, but executioners were not flawless in their handling of sentences. Story 19 My roommate said, The feeling, sound, and visual of a dog skin degloving from its body after being lost for a week and found in a pond. She's a vet tech. She's learned some shit. The owner had lost their dog. After a week or so, the owner of the dog was cleaning up and landscaping his property when he saw something in the pond behind his house and further exploration, he realized it was his missing dog. The dog was bloated and waterlogged. It barely resembled what he originally looked like. So the owner brought his dog to us for cremation services. Part of our job is prepping the body for cremation. In this case, it was just bagging the body and putting it in the freezer for pickup. When I picked up the dog to put him in the body bag, I grabbed by the scruff of his neck and under his butt. As I lifted, the skin and fur separated from the body. I went from holding a dog to just holding the skin and fur and seeing a completely skinless dog on the ground at my feet. Because of the condition of the body from decomposition and being submerged in water for 7 to 10 days, the skin just slid right off with no resistance. I'm pretty confident I'm going to hell for this. Story 20 In Japan, when you have surgery, the doctor shows you what they removed and explains it. It was a bit shocking to see. What? They don't do that in your home country. No, sir, they do not. Story 21. There are corpses on Mount Everest which are used as waypoints. Hey, look, there is no limbs Derek. I guess we're going the right way. Story 22. Only about 50% of the cells in your body are you. The rest are microbes that exist as part of your microbiome. Story 23. Manatees have... Vaginas that are the most anatomically similar to humans. Manatees may also be the inspiration for myths about mermaids, beautiful half-fish women that lured sailors to their deaths. Connecting those dots has been mentally scarring. Story 24 After a human is dead, they can still technically hear you, but not understand you. The brain doesn't fully shut off until a few minutes after death. Makes me sad knowing I wasn't there to talk to my grandfather right when he died. Story 25 The Story of John Jones 
the cave explorer who got stuck upside down inside Nutty Putty Caves. For close to up to 24 hours, he was jammed between two rock formations head first, basically hanging upside down, unable to move. He breathed in and wiggled into a crevice thinking it got bigger and he could turn around. When his lungs expanded, he was stuck. He died because being stuck head first made all the blood rush to his brain and his organs started to shut down. His brother tried to rescue him and his pregnant wife was outside the cave. To this day, his body is still stuck in nutty putty caves. Do not look at the pictures if you are claustrophobic. Story 26 your face has tiny microorganisms, the face mites. They live in hair pores and eat the sebum. At night, they go to the surface and woohoo, lay eggs in the pore. These are not to be confused with the bacteria that cause acne. They actually help regulate output of sebum in your face. Good to know these worms are helping out, but now I'm aware of the multiple microscopic parties. Story 27 a study by WWF found we consume about 5 grams of microplastics a week, roughly the equivalent to eating an entire credit card. Story 28 Forgive my unscientific terminology, but basically there is a female whale, maybe a blue whale or a sperm whale, I don't remember the species at all, who was born with some type of genetic defect or physical-slash-anatomical abnormality, something like that that causes her vocalizations to be produced at a different sound frequency than the other whales of her species. Because of this, the other members of her species cannot hear or perceive her vocalizations. So this poor whale has spent her whole life wandering through the world's oceans all alone, trying to unsuccessfully communicate with other whales who basically don't even know she exists. Story 29 there are these things in space called gamma ray bursts that are created when neutron stars collide and create black holes. They travel at the speed of light and if they hit Earth would most likely cause a mass extinction of humans. They are undetectable and could strike at any moment. Story 30 Chainsaws were originally meant for childbirth. Penguins have teeth on their tongue. Chickens can sneeze. McDonald was accused for having either human or horse meat. Everyone here is talking about the meats and chicken, but what is this about baby chainsaws? Here's what I found on Google. Two doctors invented the chainsaw in 1780 to make the removal of pelvic bone easier and less time-consuming during childbirth. It was powered by a hand crank and looked like a modern-day kitchen knife with little teeth on a chain that wound in an oval. Story 31 Etymologists who study roaches often become allergic to roaches during their career around the same time they become allergic to pre-ground coffee. Story 32 Unlike most people with phobias, I can trace mine, worms, back to a single childhood trauma, namely hearing this. I was at school aged 10. We'd all had a nurse visit the school and give us a vaccine in the morning, and come the afternoon we were all bitching about having sore arms. Our teacher reprimanded us for being ungrateful for the NHS by way of the following story. When her grandmother was a child, pre-socialized health care, she lived in a poor rural area. You didn't call a doctor unless you were literally going to die, because it was so difficult to get hold of one and it would bankrupt your family anyway. The kids around there were prone to tapeworms. Standard cure for tapeworms was as follows. Get some steamed fish and put it in a bowl. Tapeworms apparently love steamed fish. Yum yum. Get child to sit with the bowl in front of their open mouth. Tapeworm smells the yummy yummy fish and comes up to get it. It was over 25 years ago that I heard this story and it still makes me feel physically ill. Postscript to the incident is that when I went home from school, my dad commented that I looked a bit pale, but I was too freaked out to tell him what was wrong. He then put a plate of tagliatelle in front of me. Story 33 the U.S. had performed secret experiments where they tested mustard gas on over 4,000 of their own soldiers, especially black and Puerto Rican soldiers. Because the experiments were classified, the victims didn't even tell their doctors what happened to them, so survivors couldn't get the treatment they needed. Story 34 Before humans went to space, they would send animals, dogs, turtles, monkeys, etc., the problem with that is that they never bothered to think how they would get back, so a lot of animals just died up there, alone. Story 35 
there were human zoos back in the 1800s and even early 1900s. Yes, at some point in time, people of color were put on display at human zoos for people to see them since they were considered exotic in Europe. 